Coach recently announced musician Lil Nas X as their newest global ambassador. He's been featured on their website, on their social media. He closed their spring summer 2023 show in New York Fashion Week, and there's an upcoming collaboration with him. But Lil Nas X is a very controversial figure. He's an openly gay black man who creates overtly adult content, and he's been linked to Satanism through at least one video of his and to some Nikes that he created with human blood in them. So why would Coach choose someone so controversial? Why would they choose a Satanist to represent their brand? Stay tuned to find out. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community post on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. Brands have a history of working with celebrities to endorse them and to represent their products. Coach is no stranger to this, but they call their celebrity representatives ambassadors. Their biggest celebrity ambassador in recent years has been Jennifer Lopez. But Coach has also hired Megan Thee Stallion, an American musician, Michael B. Jordan, an American actor, and Coach has a global market, so one of their strategies is to have many ambassadors that can reach many different audiences around the globe. Lil Nas X is part of that strategy. Now before we start talking about him, I want to ask you to do the same thing that I did when I started researching this, which is to ask yourself, what do you already know about Lil Nas X, if anything. What's your opinion of him? And why do you have that opinion? For me, all I knew about him was that he did the song called Old Town Road. I mostly know it from the Doritos commercial that was parodying the song. I knew Billy Ray Cyrus was involved in that, but I had never even heard the entire song and I had never seen the full video. I have since seen it, and I highly recommend watching the video because it's really funny. So before I started working on this video, I really had no opinion of Little Nas X, but clearly others do. Others have very strong opinions because I recently put out a video on Coach's new business model and I got quite a few comments that mention him and I don't remember any of them being positive. They were all criticizing Coach's choice of him and often people said they would stop buying from Coach because of some of the choices they were making these days, including hiring him. One person even called him a Satanist. Now for me, when I hear things like that, I don't just believe it. That sounded quite extreme to me and that threw up a bunch of red flags. Because when I hear things like that, it sounds very judgmental and biased and it tends to be based in ignorance. And what's the solution to ignorance? Education. So I started researching him. I am a teacher after all. I am constantly educating myself and trying to educate others. And that is how this video evolved. And like any good researcher, I will have my sources linked in the description box below. So if you want to check any of them out, you can do so easily. I read articles, I watched videos, and most informative, I think, I watched several interviews with him. Here's an overview of what I learned. His given name is Montero. That's also what he titled his first album and one of the songs he created that has become quite controversial. And I have watched that video, which is where a lot of the controversy and the Satanism comes from. More on that later. His parents separated when he was young. His mother was an addict, like my father, and his father won custody of him. His father was also a gospel singer and heavily into the Christian church, so Christianity was a huge influence on him. He says he knew since he was five years old that he was gay. And I know there are a lot of people who think that you can't know something like that when you're that young, but that's just not true. It happens all the time. The Christian upbringing in which he was raised taught that being gay was a bad thing, even evil. So he grew up, like many LGBTQ plus people, being told that an important part of who he is was wrong and invalid. And he said that he used to pray over and over to not be gay. And if you've never experienced something like this in your life, pause for a minute and think what that must be like. Try to imagine if that was happening to you as you're growing up 
year after year, you're being told who you are is wrong and bad, what kind of effect that would have on you? It's pretty awful. His fame and his worldly successes began when he ran a Nicki Minaj fan site. That's where he learned how to use social media as a promotion tool, and that's when he started to write music and he wrote Old Town Road. That blew up on social media partly because of his social media promotion savvy, and then that was followed up by the remix with Billy Ray Cyrus, so that version that we know is not the original version. From there, he released his first album, Montero, and that album was also how he came out to the world. He said in an interview he only told two people in his personal life, his father and one other person, and no one else. Everyone found out with the release of that album. It's a pretty gutsy way to do it. The song Montero, which is also called Call Me By Your Name, has a music video that accompanies it, and that is highly controversial because it has quite a bit of adult content, and that's mixed with Christian imagery. The video starts in Eden and it ends in hell with an adult scene with the devil. And ultimately, little spoiler alert here, Lil Nas X kills the devil and then becomes the devil himself. And that part of the video is part of what upsets people so much, but I'm here to tell you it shouldn't. And here's why. If you think this is all about Satanism, let me offer you another perspective. Let's keep in mind this is a music video. That means there's a song that accompanies it, and you can't separate the imagery from the music and the lyrics. If you can look past the adult content and the drug use that are in the lyrics, you'll see that the song is actually about the singer wanting to be with this other person, but the other person only wants to be with them secretly. The singer knows this, doesn't like it, knows that it's wrong. It's not like a healthy way to have a relationship. But ultimately, their desire for the other person is so strong that they set that aside and they embrace the situation. So this devil imagery is a metaphor. It's not about Satanism. It's not about becoming Satan or becoming evil. It's about embracing your own faults or what some people may see as faults. In the context of Lil Nas X's life, the Christian imagery in the Montero video mirrors his own struggles with homosexuality whilst he's living in Christianity and about how it and thus he are demonized. Ultimately, he embraces that part of himself, even though his church has told him that it's wrong, even evil. So does the video make more sense now? And if the adult content or the devil imagery in this video is what bothers you, please keep in mind he is not the first to use it. If Elvis's gyrating hips, or Chuck Berry's sweet little 16, or the Rolling Stones sympathy for the devil, or Madonna didn't bother you, then you might want to ask yourself why this does. Because they're all the same thing. The the world always progresses, art always pushes boundaries, and there are always people who complain about the immorality of it, just like they did with all the musicians I just mentioned. But time passes, people grow more educated, minds are opened, and the world hopefully becomes a better and more accepting place. Great art makes you question things, especially things you hold dear and things you see as truths. Great education does the same thing. You should always question everything, even the things that you hold fundamental to life. Question it all. Why do you believe the things that you believe? Why do you feel the way you feel or react the way you react? And do those beliefs and feelings and reactions represent the person you really want to be. Now let's talk about the Nike blood sneakers. From what I can tell, this was a publicity stunt and a money-making venture, and nothing more. Here's what happened. Lil Nas X partnered with this company in New York. They're called MS CHF. They took Nikes that already existed and they altered them to create these so-called Satan shoes. This company had already released some other shoes that they called Jesus shoes, which had holy water inside. I checked out this company's website today and they currently have lots of weird things for sale. All of it or almost all of it was already sold out. They had some sparkling spiked holy water for sale, so that gives you an idea of the kinds of things they do. So these Satan shoes were a counter to the Jesus shoes, and of course they related to the imagery in the Montero video. The shoes had a drop of human blood in this little pocket under your heel, and it was marketed as sacrificed blood human blood. But in reality, it was employees of this company voluntarily donating some blood for the shoes. And the blood was mixed with this other liquid. It was supposed to be 
one drop of human blood in each shoe. The shoes were black with a few red highlights. They had a little metal pentagram on top and a Bible verse that had something to do with the devil falling. If you're not that familiar with Christian imagery, the devil is a fallen angel. There were 666 pair made and sold. They sold out in like one second. So all this stuff to me, adds up to silly Satanistic tropes that aren't really about Satanism. And if you know more about Lil Nas X, you'll know he has a fantastic sense of humor. So I would think this has something to do with that as well. But to me, it seems like this was all just about promotion, getting attention, and about making a little money. And that's all it really seems to be. I don't get at all that it's about Satanism. And by the way, Nike had nothing to do with this. Like I said, this company took Nike shoes that already existed and altered them. In fact, due in part to the controversy and all the publicity these shoes got, Nike sued this company and they had a settlement where they offered full refunds to people if they returned the shoes. But from what I read, a lot of people kept them, sold them, and doubled or tripled their money because the shoes were so popular. And for those concerned about the human blood in the shoes, as I was researching for this video, I talked to my friend here on YouTube, Winnie B. L. V. I will have her channel linked below, of course. She used to be a radio DJ and she knows lots of things about lots of different musicians and music. So I asked her what she knows about Lil Nas X. She didn't know all that much, just kind of the basic things that have been in the news, the big controversies. But she reminded me, do you guys remember when Angelina Jolie and Billy Bob Thornton were together and they would wear these vials of each other's blood around their neck as necklaces to like award ceremonies? Very odd. I remember that happening. I I don't remember anyone calling them Satanists for it. And in my experience, the people who are so quick to judge are also the people who choose not to research and learn more about the things they're judging. In other words, they're the people who are willfully ignorant. Now let's tie all this back to Coach. Given all this information about Lil Nas X and how controversial he is, why on earth would Coach choose this guy? to be their ambassador and to make such a big campaign out of it. Well, one reason is Lil Nas X's connection to fashion. He tends more toward outrageous and daring outfits as evidenced in many of his red carpet styles and his three costume in one Met Gala look. The kind of fashion he sports pushes boundaries just like his music and art does. It's a form of artistic self-expression. And this is one of the things that Coach is aiming to represent going forward with their new business model. Given that, and given everything else I just talked about, with Lil Nas X unapologetically being his authentic self, and not only that, but advocating that for other people to be their authentic selves and to be accepting of other people for who they are, I think it makes perfect sense that Coach chose him to be their ambassador. As I was researching him, I was reminded a lot of Lady Gaga. I feel like he's kind of the male version of Lady Gaga. I love her, by the way, and I would love to see them do a collaboration someday. She also has an emphasis on fashion and self-expression through fashion and advocating for acceptance of who you are and who other people are as their authentic selves and not pretending to be someone else for someone else. In one of the articles I read, Coach's chief executive, Todd Kahn, said that Lil Nas is a fabulous representation of the authenticity of a Gen Zer, that's their target market now, who has the courage to be real. So that sums it up. But the best description I've seen from Coach as to why they chose him is on their website. And it says, our new global ambassador shares our belief in courageous self-expression. And my interpretation here would be that the courageousness is because expressing yourself when you are not a societal norm and someone who is accepted by everyone naturally is courageous. You know that you're going to hit some backlash just because of who you are. So yes, it's courageous to step up and be yourself in that situation. It shouldn't be because we should all be accepting, but it is. And for me, it goes beyond that description. It's about acceptance of self and acceptance of others as we all are. Are. And shouldn't that be our ultimate goal as a society? It's all about peace and love, baby. And Lil Nas X has said this explicitly in an interview I watched. I'm not quoting him here, but he says he doesn't want to be seen as a perfect person or a role model in that way, but he does want to be seen as a model of being who you really are, of living life authentically. And that clearly resonates with Coach's new business model. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this. It was a heck of a lot of work to do all this research 
research, but I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed learning about him, and I'm rooting for him now. I think he's great. I'm especially impressed that he's basically built his own success through social media. Boy, wouldn't I like to get that big and make the millions through YouTube. It's admirable. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hope to see you back here next time, and I hope you have a fantastic day being your authentic self. Bye.